Joining me now, House Republican Whip, Mr. Steve Scalise. Uh, Mr. Steve Scalise, you're terrific to come on. You've been so good to us. Um, let me start. I want to get to the oil problem and all that in a second. But um, on this reconciliation bill, how do you see it? What are you hearing? And am I wrong in assuming that whatever bad the Senate might come up with, the House will make it triply bad? The de your Democratic left-wing progressives in the House will make it triply bad. What do you think about it? Well, Larry, it's good to be back with you. And, and it seems like Groundhog Day because we've been talking about this bad bill that changes names and changes price tags. But the damage it would do to our economy is still devastating. And until the clock strikes midnight on September 30th, nobody can sleep safely uh, because I, I don't trust that the House is going to uh, somehow hold any kind of line. Their greed surely is going to want to jack up the price tag. But if Joe Manchin ultimately agrees to a trillion dollars, uh, that is no compromise. That's no moderate you know, ability to to kind of stave off damage that will do tremendous damage to our economy. It'll drive up inflation, as you've pointed out. And I'm sure at some point the House would take that if that's the most the House could get. They want to spend four and a half trillion. They passed that through Pelosi's House a few months ago, but they would take a trillion, I think, if they get it. Uh, I'm glad that they're fighting amongst themselves, but there's still a few weeks left. And uh, every day you hear about this, you can see how bad it would be for the economy, how much more it would raise prices that are already too high. When you take a trillion dollars out of people's wallets to spend on Washington, there is never anything good that can come of it. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that the, the, the social spending will raise inflation. The tax hikes will deepen the recession. I mean, I guess, you know, nobody in the White House passed Econ 101, not the president, not his favorite intern, not his press secretary. But I'm disappointed. I mean, I'm hoping Joe Manchin at the end does not break my heart because he was so helpful uh, for Save America, Kill the Bill, uh, the first, uh, the big bill. But you're right. I mean, how, how could anybody in their right mind want a trillion dollar tax hike, which probably will be double or triple yeah. from the House? But, but seriously, it's like, Huh? Really? We're in a recession or we're in the front end of a recession? Whatever. The economy is slowing, slumping. A trillion dollars? And they're going to go after corporations and they're going to go after, you know, confiscatory wealth taxes on the successful entrepreneur. Well, you know the drills, walls, everybody. It's just, it can't right. be. It just and we're just be. starting to get a lot of those companies to move jobs back to America mm. after we cut taxes, working with you and President Trump and the White House. When we cut taxes, we actually saw companies move jobs back to America by the millions, by the way. We saw income levels all do better, lower income levels especially. We started rebuilding our middle class when we cut taxes. But if you still don't believe that, and believe me, Democrats are trying to rewrite history on that every day, go look at states. Where are the high states, the high tax states? How are they doing? And how are the low tax states doing? New York, California, you know, liberal utopia run by Democrats, Illinois, every single local government all the way up to the governor, Democrat with high taxes, crazy regulations, crime out of control. People are leaving those states in droves to go to the low tax states, Florida, Texas, uh, North Carolina. Just look at where people are moving away from and moving to high taxes, destroy jobs, economies, and especially the lower and middle income families. Yeah, the Steve Moore and I used to refer to it, these uh, socialist states, as worker, the workers' paradise states. <laughs> Unfortunately, jo job losses are so You can't large. find workers. <laughs> this is no workers' paradise. Uh, all right, so this thing is still in abeyance. Um, we will see. We will see. We'll get more reports up. Um, Steve Scalise, let's talk about um, uh, West Virginia versus EPA, uh, which is a great victory. Uh, first of all, uh, for federalism. Second of all, you can stop all this regulatory overreach. Now, uh, lately, as I understand it, the Interior Department is suggesting no, let's see if I get this right, no new leases on the Atlantic and the Pacific side. Uh, maybe something in the Gulf, but not clear. 
maybe something in Alaska, but not clear. They could wind up with no new leases, not even getting to the permit stage, which is the key. But down your way, you may not get anything. This is after Biden is always talking about leases and so forth and so on. What do you make of that? And um, can that be appealed? It's being fought on a number of different fronts. But, Larry, make no mistake that the vagueness, the opaqueness, and then the open hostility against American energy by all of Biden's agencies, EPA, SEC through the ESG policies, the Department of Interior, Department of Energy, all of them have anti-American energy policies, shutting down permitting, even if you have leases, and they love talking about the thousands of leases. If they don't give you a permit to actually develop the lease, then the lease is worthless. You can't do anything new with it. If you did something five or 10 years ago, great. Eventually, as we all know, those wells deplete, and that's why you're always exploring. It's called exploration for a reason. You're looking for new opportunities to produce energy. And if you can't get those new permits, which they are not giving right now, then ultimately you don't allow America to compete on a world market. And that means OPEC countries, monopoly companies, uh, countries. If you look at these you know, dictatorships, whether it's Russia, Iran, Venezuela, they are the only ones that control world energy markets. And that's why you have a high price. If you open up American energy those countries become less relevant because then we have a free market running energy. We're the only free market. America is the only free market country that has real vast energy reserves, and Biden has shut them off. That's why we're paying more at the pump. Everybody knows it. It's not Putin's tax. It's not Putin's high gas price. Putin's irrelevant on energy markets if America's open for business. Biden, day one, shut America down for business on the energy markets. Keystone permits, energy, all these agencies going after American energy. It's, it's paying, it's costing families. It's costing them dearly. They might not even be traveling for this summer because they can't afford the gas prices. Mr. Scalise, last one. Uh, I've got 30, 40 seconds. Isn't the Gulf of Mexico, isn't that the cheapest break even of oil? It's high quality oil. And, you know, the profit break even is around 30 or $40 a barrel rather than 50 60 or 70 dollars a barrel i mean why wouldn't you want to open up some offshore leases down in the gulf and they're vast reserves in the gulf so you can get over a billion barrels uh, from a large find but it costs you a few billion dollars to start the process getting your permits starting to do the exploration if you ultimately hit oil it might be seven eight years before you see the first dollar mm. so you might have eight billion dollars invested before you see a dime back and there are big returns you can get. But right now, you can't even go and explore. They're not even given those leases, as you pointed out, in the Gulf of Mexico. And what that means is no energy is being produced long term in America. People don't see the ability to invest in America. So they're investing in other places. And it's cartels and dictatorships that run our energy prices. And they're happy with high gas prices. We're not. We want to lower those prices. Biden is keeping the prices high. Yes, he is. Afraid to say that. Exactly right. Mr. Steve Scalise, thank you, sir. We really appreciate your time, as always. Always great being with you, Larry. Thanks. Great.